so may we got a lot of um a lot of feedback let's put it that way from our april report and the podcast that followed did you know that dubai south is developing the initial phases of their new development called south bay this awarded contract is worth 272 million dollars which is 999 million terms yeah what do you think about that is man city gonna win the champions league what do you think <laughs> Well, I can't believe we get to talk about Man City on um, on the podcast. I hope so. It'd be a difficult game. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Taking Care of Business. This week, I'm joined by someone you'd have seen all over our social channels for the last few months. It's Cash. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. So we're going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to talk about the May report first and foremost and a couple of other things we've seen going on in the market. The difference will be, I think Cash will be asking me more questions and I'll be trying to trying to answer them yep. as well as I can do. So let's kick things off. Yep, so uh, Paul, tell us what happened in May during the, in the report. So May, we got a lot of, um, a lot of feedback, let's put it that way, from our April report and the podcast that followed in terms of we reported a drop in transfers in the market which is accurate. It happened. It's we're here to we're here to give accurate facts and figures, not just paint blue skies and sunshine. If if that's not re- uh, replicated in the data, however, at the time we acknowledged it was uh, Eid holidays, uh, Ramadan, and also the Easter holidays. So it's like a, a triple whammy of things that happened in the market, which did cause the slowdown. And we predicted that this month we would expect to see higher, which is exactly what we've seen. So I think. The first thing to talk about is there was 11,621 property transfers at the Dubai Land Department, which is a massive 75% increase year on year and a 40% increase month on month. The value of those transactions is, or was, 33 billion, which is a huge 85% increase year on year and 26% increase month on month. So it appears in May, Back to back to business, back to usual for for Dubai. Do you think that Dubai still stands as a gold mine for UK investors? I mean, I'm talking like based on last week's podcast, also. Yeah. So for those that haven't seen last week's podcast yet, we spoke about um, I, there was another mortgage rate rise in the UK last week, and not only with the mortgage rate rise, but what the banks in the UK have done is they've taken away some um, some products that they had on the market for buy to let investors, and they've increased the rates further for buy-to-let investors than, than what the actual base rate rise was. So, which made it a, a, a bigger barrier to entry as, lo- as well as a lot of regulation that's been going on probably in the last five to eight years in the UK that's really made it harder for buy-to-let investors to make money. Consequently, over the last eight years, and more so since we're being honest, um, a lot of UK investors are flocking to Dubai and the UAE at the moment. There's a lot of people that are moving over here to live, to uh, moving their businesses over here. But there's also a lot of people from the UK who are living in the UK and, and no intention of leaving the UK, but who, who are now buying property in Dubai as an investment rather than buying back in the UK. So I'm always, I understand the, the, the question. I'm always hesitant to say things like gold mine, but um, it's a very, Dubai is a very, very attractive place for, for UK uh, investors. And investors are from a, from around the world, really. Yeah, I mean, of course, there's also like it's there's no tax on income, so it's a great place to be at. And uh, what about like the off plan market? Off plan was good, I think. Off plans, um, off plans been good for for quite a while now. So we had a notable uh, transaction in Como Residence, which uh, was a penthouse over there that the, the team managed to sell for 65 million which was amazing so that was the the biggest transaction in month for them but overall they, they, the team had a, a very very busy month and that comes in again from local investment but also a lot of foreign investment that we're talking about and again whether it's the uk or um the, the sources from from other countries around the world if we look at the market in general there was 5651 off-plan transactions registered at the land department in may compared to 5,970 for the secondary market. So almost 50-50 really. Yeah. Uh, in terms of value, there was 14 billion dirhams worth of off-plan transactions and 19 billions worth of secondary transactions, which again is following suit at the moment that the secondary transactions are um, are providing a higher, a higher value in the market. 
But again, we spoke about it loads. It's natural. The amount of high ticket listings that are selling at the moment is is phenomenal. It's like every week you read a record and it's 100 million for this, 200 for that, 400 for that. So yeah. it, it's no surprise at all that the, the secondary market's um, performing like that. What I'd say about the mortgage market as well, one stat that really stood out for me, compared to May uh, 2022, there was a 99.99%, I mean, we could just, might as well just round it off to 100, I don't we? Yeah. But a 99.99% increase in the value of mortgages oh. within Dubai, which is absolutely huge. So again, that shows how much buyer interest there is, how much yeah. investment there is, but also that the, the rise in the, the average property price as well, which is which is going on. And whilst I've got this perfect screen in front of me that I'm sharing all this data uh-huh. from, We've still seen that the the higher end of the market, and really for the purposes of this um, and the report that we put out, we talk about the higher end of the market being 10 million plus, but the reality is 10 million is quite low end for, yeah. for a bit of the market at the moment. But 10 million plus still only makes up 3.75% of the market. Over, I think it's about 91% of the market is under 5 million dirhams, which for Dubai really, we. That I would class that as an affordable level. Yeah. If you go below three million, I think it's seventy-seven percent of the market is still below three million. So I still maintain the message that anyone who's watched the pods previously will have heard: the market's in a healthy place. It's not a bubble that's growing, and it's not being led by all these huge sales and transactions in the market. Most of the activity in the market are at an affordable level. It's mainly people getting onto the property ladder, maybe upsizing. And as we can see by the, the mortgage transactions. It's mainly mortgage buyers, which is is a good thing for the market. That's a, a healthy property market. And the reason I say that is if the market was overrun by cash buyers, you'd maybe say, okay, it is a bit of a There's bubble. A bubble yeah. yeah, things things could go a little bit wrong here. But the fact that people are, are taking the mortgages, mortgages is a big commitment for people. I think it, despite the high demand and the high level of transactions, I think the, the market's still in a, a good place for us all. We've also had more um, more people opting for finance than cash buyers, which is great. Hundred percent. And also, also witnessed um, an impressive fifty eight percent growth month on month for villa and townhouse transactions too. Yeah, which is it's always a funny one. This because we always try and spot like trends and migrations in the market. Obviously, after COVID, there was a, a huge push out to villa areas because uh, people wanted the outside space. They realised after being cooped up. Then it was a case of, um, as restrictions and everything else, these people kind of flocked back to the apartments because they wanted uh, the city centre. And whether we say city centre is in downtown Dubai, which really is a centre, or like just Marina, JBR, where there's a hive of activity in terms of um, nightlife, cafes, restaurants, uh, beach clubs in case of Marina and JBR, et cetera. So... I always like to keep uh, an eye on this one. But yeah, again, we've seen the, the popularity of uh, villas and townhouse increase. But again, I put that down to families are moving over here. Like yeah. people are, even within our company, we've got um, we've got loads of people at the moment who are moving over and bringing their families with them. And I think that's happening throughout Dubai. And it, as well as the income, I always go back to this. I think one of the biggest drivers is just the safety and the lifestyle that you can yeah. that you can offer people over here. And also the biggest factor is like tax-free income, you know? Yeah. It's very easy to bring your family here comparatively. Uh, yeah, it is. My hesitation is because school fees are quite <laughs> <laughs> do eat into the, the tax-free income. But yeah, no, it, it is. Uh, but you are right. You are right. And it is, again, it's a great place for, for people to, to bring, the, the, uh, to bring their, their kids and their families over to. I know you're going to go on to... a different slide in a minute and, and a couple of things we've seen in the news but there's a couple more things I wanted to highlight on the re- report before we did so client registrations um, which is always a barometer for me of how the market's going to perform in the next two or three months because people who are registering registering with us today will transact in the next two to three months so client registrations in May uh, was up 21% at, uh, compared to April but a massive 96% year on year oh, so wow. this, this is what i mean when we talk about the the demand in the market it's sky high so this is a buyer registrate or cla- uh, buyers that are registering with us with an interest to purchase property and activity levels in terms of viewing was up 23 percent um month on month may compared to april and up 48 percent year on year but i would expect to see 
with 96 percent uh, increase in client registrations that june is going to be a very busy month as well for for people out there viewing and a 9.6 percent increase month on month in terms of property listings so i know if brand is watching this from dubai I, she's sick of us talking about undersupplying <laughs> the market so i won't labor the point too much but you can see an, a 9.6 percent increase in listings compared to 96 percent increase in client registrations there's a huge um, a huge mis mismatch in the market there uh, and then if we look on the tenant side one thing i picked up here is listings were up 21 percent um but, um on the rental side of the market whereas client registrations month on month were up 3.7 percent so much smaller amount than um than the buyers so we might see from a tenant's point of view they might see a couple more options in the market over over the, the coming month or two and it may or may not it remains to be seen and as with everything it's always area specific but they may or may not have a little bit more room for negotiation if there's a, a few more units out there for them to to choose from okay fire away i know you you've got questions for me in terms of other things we've been seeing in the market so that was a, a quick recap of the may report we released the report i think it, it's tomorrow will confirm but there'll be a lot more detail in there for for people to have a look yeah. at as well it's easy to understand and you can navigate the market with confidence so uh let's get on to the new corporate tax update did you see that ministry of finance has announced a new update for corporate tax since it got enforced uh, june 1st onwards yes but tell me what it was so um basically a lot of people have been questioning that is corporate tax applicable to rental incomes as well so what do you think is it going to be applied over there well so this was something that came out so we're, we're filming this on the 7th of june the news came out on the 6th of june um that for overseas investors they would be subject to corporate tax we're still waiting for the full details but as i understand it and have read into it so far and I, I could be wrong i think it's for those that are purchasing overseas investors that are purchasing properties in a company name because obviously it's corporate tax um that's one then as we know i think and again i i, I could be wrong the reason i hesitate is I, I, i'm not a tax expert but I, I like to read up on it so i like to think i i know a certain extent um as we've seen corporate tax in dubai the company has to generate three hundred and seventy thousand dirhams worth of turnover to be liable for tax so i would presume on the property side for overseas investors again it would be three hundred and seventy five thousand dirhams as the, the threshold but what I've also seen is, so in the UK, people pay tax, and not just corporate, like personal tax on property investments. So if you buy it in your, your personal name, on the entire, on just the rental income. Okay. It used to be different in the UK, and this is a regulatory, regulatory change that, that I mentioned. It used to be that in the UK, you could um, deduct your mortgage payment, any, any uh, expenses, and then pay tax on the remainder. <laughs> What it seems to be in Dubai is that they they want to, they only want to tax on the profit that's made in a property. So if you've got a mortgage, which as we saw from the conversation two or three minutes ago, a lot of people do, you can deduct things like mortgage payments, service charges, any ongoing maintenance. You can uh, de um, deduct those from um, from the rental income and just pay pay the tax on the profit. So it remains to be seen who how many people it will impact. And again, it seems, I feel it will only be people who are buying properties in a, in a company name, but hopefully we'll have more news on this in the next couple of weeks for, for everyone. Oh. But again, just to reiterate the point, it is for overseas investors. So anyone who's living, residing in Dubai and investing in property, there's, there's no change at the moment. So you think that Dubai still continues to thrive for investors, even though the introduction of corporate tax is there? Yeah. For foreign I, I think I think it's not, it's not a surprise that increased taxations coming into the city and as much as we all love a tax-free lifestyle dubai and the uae they can't they can't run forever on their own coffers they need to generate money to yeah. help run the city as it is is growing like infrastructure infrastructure uh transport uh medical care etc etc all needs to be paid for somehow what i think we've, we'll see in the uae though as we all know we've all got our own personal medical insurance there's not a so in a certain extent there is but uh, by and large it's not a state-funded medical service we, we pay for everything uh, as we go as opposed to again i'm going to refer to the uk where there's a lot of public services that are provided like education schooling etc etc so i think dubai will always be a place where we'll have tax there'll be more tax that comes in in future mm -hmm. but i think it will never be at the level of 
or maybe never is a strong word, who can predict what's going to happen in 20 or 30 years, but I don't foresee it being at a level to rival the UK or Europe or the, the US, for example. So for that reason, I think it'll always remain an attractive uh, place to invest and, and to live. So moving on uh, to South Bay's development, um, did you know that Dubai South is developing the initial phases of their new development called South Bay? This awarded contract is worth $272 million, which is 999 million therms. Yeah. What do you think about that? Amazing. It's fantastic. And we'll, we'll keep, we'll continue to see more of this over the next few years. And I think as Dubai grows and develops and as there's community after community built, Dubai keeps and the developers keep learning from past communities that they've built and they, they keep making them better and better and better. So I think with the South Bay development as a kilometer long crystal uh, lagoon, three kilometers of waterfront promenade, multiple beaches, clubhouse, fitness centers, parks. I mean, it sounds amazing, doesn't it? Yeah. But there's there's more and more developments that are coming up like this in Dubai. So again, in terms of why people want to move here, Dubai's got so much space that it can yeah. build these incredible developments from scratch. Like I was in the UK last weekend and I love the UK. It's a beautiful country and the, the cities are beautiful. But if you go around the, the, any major city in the UK, there's not space to develop for all this amazing yeah. lifestyle, crystal lagoons, et cetera, et cetera. So this is why Dubai has such an advantage at the moment. And South, so South Bay sounds incredible. I was talking to the developer sales team um, about it only yesterday. But again, we will see more and more of these type of developments coming up over the, the next few years. And uh, don't you think that Dubai is like adjusting to the buyers and renters' demands? As a lot of people nowadays are looking for waterfront developments and Dubai also announced that they're doing the whole beach expansion project. A hundred percent. So what do you think about that? It's fantastic. And the people, they are, Dubai and the developers, because it really is the developers that are making these communities, are really, have now cottoned onto the fact they need to create a lifestyle for people. Yeah. People aren't just looking for... The property is not the most important thing to people. People will make compromises on the property itself, even the location, if the lifestyle that's on offer to them and their family is is at a different level. And I think this is what the developers have really noticed now and are really cottoning onto. And they're making each community is like becoming its own destination. Yeah. So you no longer have to think, well, what we're going to do? Where are we going to go to this weekend? We're going to have to jump in the car, do the X, Y, Z everything is on the doorstep in these communities yeah. for people there's like so many more man-made waterfront projects and beaches such as like the lalga for instance district one also it's, it's pretty nice what they're doing yeah i agree completely and then i mean getting on to my last point this is the most interesting one to me is man city gonna win the champions league what do you think <laughs> well i can't believe we get to talk about man city on um, on the podcast i hope so it'd be a difficult game but we've just, um, the reason I was in the UK was to go to the, the FA Cup final, which thankfully uh, we managed to win. So we've won the, the Premier League, the FA Cup. We're here to replicate what United did back in 1999 and yeah. win the treble now. So we're, we're one game away from it. So Second let's see, yeah. fingers crossed. And uh, if LK Gundogan comes in clutch like he has been in all these games, do you think he deserves the blonde year over Holland? That's a good question. But before I get onto it, what does comes in clutch mean? I mean, like saving the game, sort of. Well, I've never heard that. Um, but do you know what? It's a good question. It's always the players like Haaland who get the nominations for the Ballon d'Or. And your likes of Gundogan do go, not a notice, because he gets a lot of credit, but but maybe for big awards like this, they, they do get overlooked. But do you know what? It's not a bad question, because if there's one man that's delivered for us over the years, and especially this year in big games and big moments, it is Ilkay, so who knows? Maybe we'll contact the um, the, the Ballon d'Or organisers and put his name yeah, forward. We're shouting out to you. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully, fingers crossed for the weekend anyway. Let's see. Yeah, anyway. Good. Thank you very much, Cash. Thank you, Pete. Great to have you on here. Breakdown. Thank you, everyone, for watching. As usual, um, any questions, any clarity, anything you want to talk about, let us know. If you could like, follow, subscribe to the page, it would be excellent. And... Hopefully I don't get too much negative feedback from any non-Man City fans. <laughs> Thank you and see you next time.